Behind the glamour of a new car launch, the noise of a race weekend, and the headline news of the latest drama engulfing the sport are quiet, ordered, and mainly anonymous factories in which the cars are built. At the top teams, 500 staff work away designing, manufacturing, and then building the two cars that carry the team's hopes for the year. The quiet open plan offices where the cars are designed could be an insurance agency. For all the excitement that's on show, no champagne spraying here. The McLaren Technical Center is one facility that stands out for its rural location and architectural merit. F1 has taken the place of the aerospace industry as the home for talented engineers and precision manufacturing. Building racing cars combines carbon fiber production in clean rooms and giant autoclaves with CAD CAM milling machines and traditional metal working skills. As big enterprises, keeping the money coming in is always a challenge. It's not the most stable professional career, but the numbers directly working for F1 teams have increased from perhaps 1,000 in the early 1980s to over 5,000 now. And that doesn't count the special equipment and component suppliers and sponsors promotional staff. The workload is spread out. When the design of one car is completed, it's next onto the concepts and plans for the following year. Manufacturing follows the same pattern. The number of mechanics who actually rebuild and maintain the cars isn't large, and much sub-assembly and engine preparation is done off-site. Unlike a production racing car factory, an F1 team is unusual, in that it makes just two cars each year, uses them for 20 races, and then puts them in a museum. The only thing they have to sell is their image and results to generate more income for the next year.